Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment everybody will come on board. Sorry for the sorry for the, 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 the electric problems. Uh, to... Okay. For, this is the starting point of the first session. This is room 2.8. This is CIS formal method uh, session. Uh, you must know that some of us are, are not here because of COVID. Some, uh, some people is going to follow our sessions through internet, unfortunately. Okay, welcome on board. Welcome to uh, Coronia Architecture School. Um, I, will, I, I have to call the fellows of the first session, okay? Sonia and Saida are going to be the moderators of, the, of this session. This is supposed to, to finish at 11 Spanish time. Uh, so they are going to organize, uh, establish boundaries and limits. Okay, it's supposed you to talk about 15 to 20 minutes to have uh, a final debate of 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes. After the debate, we will continue in a coffee break, the, and the debate could, could be continued there. There will be a demonstration of an inflatable structure that is going to be demonstrated by Nuria Prieto, a PhD architect and professor of this school. Truly interesting, that experience. You are welcome. Thank you. Sonia. Okay. It's your time. It's your time. Okay. Uh, do I get a pointer? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll start, and uh, when it comes, I'll use it. Otherwise, I will have to. So good morning. Uh, my name is uh, P. Govind Raj, and I'm going to present this paper called uh, Actors at Will, a hybrid formal model for uh, cognitive building. Uh, this is a part of uh, the PhD thesis that I'm doing at the Department of Electrical Engineering, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, along with uh, my professor and guide, uh, Professor Subrat Kar. Okay, so basically this is a formal model for a cognitive building and a cognitive building is a relatively new field of research. It has been known by other names like smart spaces and things like that. But we use the notion of uh, or, or the name cognitive building in the presentation. Uh, basically a cognitive building envisions a paradigm uh, shift of view of a building from a static view of a building to more of a dynamic view of a building wherein the building itself is embedded with a lot of computational resources like sensors, uh, computers, actuators, and communication elements in such a way that the building is able to analyze the data that has been produced from these uh, varied uh, data sources. And at the same time, it's able to react to the occupants that are there in the building. So the motivation for uh, pursuing this research is basically two folds. One is the emergence of the concept of uh, cognitive or smart building at one hand. And on the other hand, uh, there is a lack of formalisms to define uh, cognitive buildings for, with respect to modeling and, uh, and studying uh, them, and especially to analyze their behavioral correctness. So this is a model that uh, we are proposing to do that. And at the other side, we uh, feel that there are certain limitations of the BIM model because BIM alone may not be able to model the behavior, uh, behavioral aspects of the cognitive building and hence uh, uh, we would like to propose this. These are some of the gaps that have been identified uh, in previous research. So one of the predominant way to check a building in the AEC, that is the architecture and engineering community is uh, our rule-based uh, checking models. And this is so because most of the building codes that are present are based on rules. So you have to follow certain rules to build uh, things. And these 
systems allow you to do a rule-based uh, checking with respect to your models. But even those rules, they are not considering the cyber and the physical aspect in a holistic way. So that needs to be uh, either changed or modified in order to uh, cognit in order for cognitive buildings to come and go. Also, uh, BIM as a model, uh, it lacks explicit static and dynamic semantics because of which the behavioral aspects of a cognitive building cannot be modeled. So to, in order to fulfill these gaps, uh, we are proposing our model, which is called Actors at BIM. So what this, so before I go into uh, the formal modeling of, uh, formal modeling of Actors at BIM, I'd like to uh, briefly discuss something about uh, some, some backgrounds. So the first notion is that of an actor. So basically, actor is, a fundamental unit of uh, computation. And what the actor has is an address. So here, this is an actor which is having an address A. Apart from, an, so uh, an address is needed for you to communicate with an actor. So you can send messages to an actor using uh, this particular address. The other thing that the actor has is uh, a state. So for example, let's consider a, a sensor within uh, you know, a building. So the state would be, uh, so suppose that it's a temperature sensor, the state within that particular actor representing the sensor would be the temperature reading. Okay. Also, the actor has a behavior. So the behavior would define how the actor or how the sensor actually senses a temperature. So that can be encoded. And in an actor system, there can be more number of actors, a large number of actors, in fact. And these actors communicate via passing message. And this is predominantly a different way of uh, modeling the system as opposed to what is called as an object-oriented way of uh, modeling systems, wherein uh, you divide your systems into uh, what are called as classes and you call functions. In here, these actors uh, pass these messages, and the message passing has an uh, asynchronous uh, semantics in the sense that when an actor A passes a message to actor B, it can just pass on the message and it need not wait for the response from B, and it can continue to work. And whenever actor B would have finished the processing, it can respond back to it. So uh, if you look at it from a system or a software point of view, the system is not blocked. And so that's an advantage from uh, you know, uh, paradigms like a thread-based mechanism where blocking and other things uh, are common. So when uh, an actor receives a message, it can do certain things. It can respond to that message. For example, uh, if, if there's, a, again, a temperature sensor there somewhere in the building, and if I would like to know uh, the temperature, I can send a message to that particular actor, and the actor can respond back with respect to the temperature range. The third thing that actor can do is uh, basically create new actors. Now, this is important because when we are creating a system within a building whose usage is going to get improved, and more number of users are coming in, you'll have to scale the system. So in order to scale the system, you will have to have an ability to create more actors to handle the load. So there will be more uh, requests that are going to come. So you'll have to have uh, more number of actors to do that. And this uh, has to be done in a dynamic fashion. So your system, from a scalability point, uh, is kind of taken care of. So what uh, Actors at BIM does is that it uses the actor model of computation. So it's, a, it's again a formal uh, model which has been proposed in the late 1970s as a model of computation. And these actors represent uh, the cyber elements within a building. Okay? So those, those elements can uh, basically sense, compute, and actuate within a building. The other layer uh, of the hybrid model is a BIM model. And what is being done here is that the actor model of computation is embedded within the building information model, the BIM model, through a common meta-modeling framework of uh, biographical reactive systems, which is again a formal model. So basically what we are doing is we are using biographical reactive system as a meta-model to model both the actor model of computation. And when I say uh, model, we mean that we give formal semantics to the behavior of actors and then embed these actors into a, a space so that the behavioral aspects of the cognitive building can be defined mathematically. And the reason for doing this is because if you define uh, the semantics uh, of, of the behavior, you'll, you're able to 
model check uh, or you know do formal analysis of this entire uh, thing. So uh, this is the other aspect. This is the meta modeling framework of Bygraphs. So before moving into this, we'll, we'll, I'll just um, briefly touch upon Bygraphs. So this need not be uh, confused with bipartite graphs, uh, which are different. So a bigraph here is uh, a structure which has got two embedded structures within it. Uh, and it models two different things which are orthogonal to each other. On the left hand side, uh, you can see a forest. A forest is basically a set of trees. And this notion models containment. So containment means that uh, a building may have a room a room may have a computer, a computer may have electronics within it. So that kind of containment can be modeled uh, using bigraphs and specifically this uh, forest which is essentially called place graph in uh, bigraph literature. The other thing that it can model is connectivity. So for example, the computer here may be connected to a Wi-Fi system somewhere across the hall. So this, these two notions are really orthogonal to each other because where you are doesn't mean where you can communicate to, okay? So these could be modeled separately. So these are the, that's why the structure is called bigraph because it's got two uh, internal structures within it. Now, what can you represent using bigraphs? You can represent things which are abstract. You can represent things which are physical. So this is an example of a built environment um, which has been represented using bigraphs. So what you see here is a built environment called G. The name of the biograph is G. And you have got these nodes, uh, which has got controls. So these controls are named as A, B, C, and R. And these act as types of these nodes. So because you have types, you can have a lot of type theoretic functions on top of the formal model. So here, uh, the representation shows a building B, uh, along with uh, a room, uh, two rooms within the building called R. And within the building, uh, you have got an agent A and a computer C. So that is a containment relationship. And then uh, you have got this connectivity relationship. And you can see that all these agents are connected together, maybe uh, in a conference call or if they are connected. And you can also see that these computers are connected within a room. And there is an agent which is outside the building here. And this agent is also uh, you know, uh, connected with the computer. Also, what you can see are uh, open links here, uh, X and W. What this allows you to do is, it allows you to compose uh, different bigraphs together. So what it allows you to do is that you can have uh, a kind of a multi-scale uh, modeling. So you can model a room, and then uh, combine with that of a building, and that and then some buildings can be combined together to form a campus, and the campus can be combined together. I mean. Like, can be combined with other biographical representation to form a city. So this, you can actually have a multi-scale uh, model of a space here. So uh, that's why we have taken this uh, representation to model the spatial aspect of the cognitive. Model. So those were the static aspects of uh, the modeling. Uh, there are dynamic aspects of modeling. The dynamic aspect is basically how this graph reconfigures itself. And that gives um, you know the facility to uh, specify the behaviors within a space. So for here, example, uh, let's consider an agent and a room. What this um, reaction rule tells us is that the agent A can move inside um, you know, a room. And this, both of them are bigraphs. So there is a left-hand side uh, of the bigraph and there is a right-hand side of the bigraph. And uh, the way uh, the system reconfigures itself is that if you find an instance of the left-hand side uh, within a bigraph, you can replace that with the right-hand side uh, of the bigraph. So, so uh, in the literature, this is called Redux. This is the reactum. And uh, this has its roots from uh, graph transformations. However, this, the way it's being done is very different from uh, uh, graph transformations based on uh, double push-outs. Uh, so this has got a beautiful uh, mathematical theory also. But however, I'll not have time to discuss the mathematical theory uh, in this presentation, it has got its roots in uh, category theory. Uh, but we'll not be discussing that in this presentation. We'll look at more practical uh, ways in which to model them. So the last um, uh, reaction rule was more from a movement's perspective. There could also be reaction rules with respect to the cyber uh, elements that are present. So for example, here you see that 
an agent can disconnect from a communication. So here you see that all agents are coming, uh, all agents are, uh, you know, communicating with each other. You can actually disconnect it. So these are some of the example reaction rules, and you build systems like this. So again, coming back to the model, what we have is we have the actor model of computation, we have BIM, and these models are combined using the biographical reactive system. And the why this is being done in this way is because of some of the limitations that we had seen in the previous work. So I'd like to discuss two uh, related works. Uh, one of the first work was uh, in 2013 by Eloy Pereira and others. It's called Big Actors, a Model for Structure Aware uh, Computation. And what has been done in that model is that uh, they have used actor model of computation and a biograph that represents space. Uh, and these actors can be hosted within the space and they can uh, query and control this particular space. But the way it has been done is that they have used two different semantics to model uh, the behavior. So they have used structure operational semantics to model the actor model of computation and they have used uh, biographical reactive uh, system semantics to represent biographs. Now the disadvantage of doing so is because you don't have a cohesive mechanism to develop tools for this because uh, you have uh, two different semantics which are being played up here. So you cannot have a tool which uh, works on uh, structural operational semantics and VRS semantics in one go. Uh, there are no tools that are available. So engineering tools uh, for verification is difficult here. And the second thing is that, you know, e this representation of biographs doesn't consider uh, BIM, okay? So it, it's, it's just uh, some nodes and edges which are connecting together. BIM is a more richer representation of a space uh, rather than that. So we, we utilize that and we'll see how. So uh, the actor set BIM model basically, as I said, uses uh, BRS based model checkers to, uh, you know, model check it. And uh, it augments BIM with uh, sense, compute, and control uh, options which are not there in BIM as such. The second example, uh, the second related work that uh, uh, we, we have discussed in the paper is uh, by Christios Siganos. Uh, it's called Adding Static and Dynamic Semantics to Building Information Model. So what has been done is that uh, a BIM model has been converted into biographs and uh, there have been, and the BIM model has been augmented with agents and physical entities. Now these agents could be uh, things, I mean people or any of those things which have not been defined uh, uh, in, the, in the paper as such. Uh, and the semantics of these agents and physical entities have not been uh, uh, specified using a computational model. And this is where our work uh, differs. We have specifically said what an agent or a physical entity is. In our case, it's an actor, it's a, it's a formal model. So we have combined, uh, instead, of, instead of just saying that it's an agent or a physical entity, we have defined that as an actor with formal semantics. And that helps to model check this, mod uh, model check this particular uh, uh, system. So, uh, in the paper, we discuss uh, the actor model semantics and use a biographical representation to provide these semantics. Uh, this, is, uh, this work has already been done, so we have reused uh, most part of uh, this uh, work, but, and we have given some extensions, so I'll be discussing about these extensions that has been introduced uh, in the paper. Uh, so, by, by by actor model semantics using biograph, what I mean is that we have, uh, the actor model has been defined using biographical reaction rules. Okay. So the extensions that were uh, included is, one is actors could form hierarchies. So you could have actors at different levels of hierarchies representing different things. So for example, you could have an actor uh, just at the topmost level, which represents the entire cognitive building itself. And this could, con this could be considered as a digital twin of the entire building itself. Now, if we come down, there can be uh, other sets of actors which are doing very specialized work. For example, there could be a device manager which handles certain device groups. Each of these device groups could be of a particular type. Okay? So this could be a sensors which represent temperature. This could be you know, actuators or something of that sort. And then at the, at the, at the leaf of the tree, you will have device actors which are representing edge of fog devices or individual sensors. And uh, what these, uh, so the paper specifically uh, provides semantics at each of these uh, group. 
uh, defined using biographical reactive system. So there are behaviors with respect to how can device register uh, with each other uh, within a device group. How can uh, you know the device group handle things like device registration? How can these devices be tracked? For example, uh, if a person is moving with a mobile phone and uh, there are uh, you know Bluetooth low energy sensors which are there in the building, you can track uh, you know people moving within the group. But we have given the formal semantics as to how the tracking can be done um, you know using uh, biographical reactive systems. Uh, also, uh, how to get information out of uh, these individual sensors, like how do we read uh, information with respect to particular sensor status, or interact with an actuator to, uh, you know, do an actuation job. For example, uh, opening and closing of a door, so on and so forth. Two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. So the other, uh, so the other other things that has been introduced are basically a query actor. And um, this query actor can be used to querying different sensor states across devices. I, I'll skip this. I'll go uh, to this slide, which talks about integration with um, BIM as a model. So uh, we see that we have used both. So we, we have seen that uh, we, have used, we have a BIM model, we have an actor model. And these models are combined. So we have a specialized actor called the BIM query actor, which can query a BIM model using the open source uh, BIM server. So this has got lots of implications because we see uh, as the model grows, there are two sets of users. One uh, would be from the computer science or electrical engineering group, which is going to uh, define the behaviors and validate the system uh, from their end with respect to the behaviors. And the other would be architects and civil engineers who would like to model using BIM and query using BIM. So both of these uh, user sets are considered here. Not only that, uh, the device actors or the actors in any of these group can manipulate BIM. So BIM has got these custom parameters. So uh, device actors can actually <coughs> modify the BIM model in real time and introduce values for these custom, uh, uh, you know, custom properties. For example, let's say that uh, uh, there's a temperature sensor which wants to update the temperature of this room. So that could be modeled as a custom property uh, within BIM and the device actor can update it and you can query BIM uh, in real time also. So we, uh, so apart from this model, we have uh, also worked on a tool suite uh, which allows you to model and program. So it's a complete ID and it works something like this. that It inputs a BIM model using IFC XML and there's a BIM to Bigraph converter uh, to convert this BIM model into Bigraphs. And on top of that, we have a suite of uh, domain specific languages one language to manipulate the biographical representation, and other which is called actors at BIM, which can augment this model using sense, compute, and uh, actuate uh, paradigm. And then we have a language to language translator, which translates this into a model checking uh, script of biographer. And you can do the model checking using Prism, which is basically a probabilistic uh, model checking utility. So there are a series of uh, domain specific, there are two uh, domain specific languages that we had worked on. This is the integration of those uh, domain specific languages with ID. What you see here is a snippet of uh, BLang, uh, which is running on top of Eclipse. It also runs on top of uh, VS Code here. And the way it's uh, been designed is, is shown in this diagram, but I'll not go into detail. But the way it's designed is that uh, you can have any ID to work with this particular uh, modeling language. And that's because uh, we have used uh, uh, the language server protocol to communicate with the IDE in an open standard way. Since uh, biographs are also a, a you know a graphical representation, there are uh, mechanisms inbuilt in the IDE in the modeling suit so that when you uh, model something using biographs, you can get the corresponding visual representation on the fly. So. Um, by verification, we mean uh, formal verification. And what is intended in this model is that you are given a requirement, uh, and you model these uh, requirement using a modeling language. And you, so these requirements could be in plain English. So you are you're using something more formal to model this. And this modeling language is based on a formalism here. And once you have the formalism in place, you have an analysis tool which could do uh, analysis of this particular model. And uh, you could, uh, what the analysis tool does is that given a property to check, it'll either give 
that okay this property is satisfied or give um, you know that there is some violation and if in case there is a violation it will give you a counter example as to where the violation has occurred so consider this that you, you are having a smart city and uh, there are um, you know four red lights on, on a circle okay and uh, each of these red light goes from red to green after 60 seconds for example so what you can do using uh, the modeling system is that you can model the red lights individually compose the models and check uh, a property of uh, safety that okay all these four red lights are not green at the same time okay so if the analysis tool says that uh, this is satisfied that means there is no reachable state wherein all those four um, uh, traffic signals are green then you are good to go in case you have you are having a violation you get an get the exact place where the violation is occurring so you rework on the model and uh, iterate on the model so that uh, your model can be corrected so in this case the modeling language is actors at whim uh, the model is biographical reactive systems it's analyzed by biographer or prism and to, in order to check there are uh, different logics uh, that can be used like ltl ctl and pctl on top of this analysis tool and you can get uh, this information so what kind of rules can be checked uh, so for example building codes uh, can be checked to a large extent so the, so things like uh, this is national building code uh, which is an indian standard and we have you will have similar standards across so it says in case of a in case a turnstile is present to restrict entry uh, there should be an alternate uh, exit that should also be present so this can be checked using uh, actors at bim using the notion of biographical matching and there could be other things like for example reliability so in case of a fire the cognitive uh, building must open uh, access control exit doors so on and so forth so you can uh, model this entire uh, egress uh, scenario using actors and BIM, and you can use a probabilistic model checker like prism uh, to see the liability of the system so i'll just conclude uh, these are uh, some of the main contributions uh, of this paper we discuss about the actors more uh, actors at BIM model uh, we discussed about the software library for converting BIM to biograph representation and this software uh, library will soon be released as an open source uh, you know, uh, product for uh, people to use. Uh, these are some of our future plans and we would like to explore uh, more with architects as to how we can extend this model uh, within the formal methods that are specifically used in architecture. So that is one thing that uh, we would like to collaborate on and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to present this to an audience uh, primarily that forms the architecture group. So uh, thank you for a, a patient hearing. Uh, I know I've taken a bit more amount of time but sorry for that. These are some of the key uh, references and uh, that's it. Thank you.